What's up, guys? I'm Nobody Special. I got my good buddy Chris from Financial Prepper is here today, and we are going to talk about the housing market. What's going on, Chris? How you doing? Oh, I'm doing well. Hey, everybody. It's good to be here, and I, I like talking real estate. I'm, I'm getting excited, but it looks like we're going to have to hang in there for a little bit longer. That's good, and, and I'm, glad, I'm glad you were available to talk today because I don't know if you knew this about me, Chris, but I am the world's worst real estate investor. I bought my <laughs> first house in August of 2006. And I lost all the money I made as a commercial fisherman on my first house. I got clobbered on that thing. All right. So when it comes to real estate, I got to bring in the experts. I got to bring in somebody who's got a, a better track record than me. Your track record in real estate is all right. So I wanted to talk to you about some numbers that we saw came out recently. I'm just going to go ahead and put this up on the screen. This is in Bloomberg dated just yesterday. U.S. pending home sales fall to the second lowest level on record. And a couple of things here. This is talking about contract signing. So we're not talking about price here for real estate. We're talking about the number of sales. Contract signings dropped for a sixth straight month in November. Decline of 4% was worse than all estimates in the Bloomberg survey. So the housing market, it's not crashing because the prices aren't coming down. In some local markets they are. But it's, it's drying up. It's freezing. It's illiquid. I mean, what am I missing here? Is that what's going on? You know, it seems to me like it's like a, a it's vapor locked. It's like it's um, it, it doesn't know whether it's washing, drying or hanging out. You've got interest rates going up and people that need to move are waiting. People that need to buy are waiting. So it's kind of this, you know, uh, do I wait? Do I, you know, I get a lot of questions about, hey, I've been responsible and I need to buy a house. Is it the right time? And it's just not yet in my opinion. So, and we're going to get into some more. I want you to see these charts he's fixing to pull up because it really shows what we've been expecting is here. It's just, we're on the very, the cusp of, we're just starting to break over. Remember real estate is so slow. It is illiquid and it is just a slow, slow moving thing. And I underestimated it the last time, uh, in 2008. I mean, it took, look at the chart. It started in 05, 04, 05. So what we're looking at here is the U.S. pending home sales index. All right. Now this is not a year over year change or a month over month. And this isn't price. This is the number of contracts being sold compared to 2001. All right. Every, every one of these data points is comparing it to 2001. That's why the first data point on this chart is at the 100 level, that was exactly the number of home sales contracts being sold in 01. So the market rose up. And now you notice back in 05, like Chris just pointed out, the number of sales started to decline rapidly in 05. But the market, the bottom didn't really fall out until late 2007, 2008, right? So like you were saying, Chris, wait, this is not something that is going to happen in the next two weeks or in the next month, this is going to play out over months, maybe even years like it did last time. And there's a lot of indicators that says, Hey, this might even be worse than last time. I'm and, thinking uh, two or three years. And I didn't want to wait that long. Cause I really enjoyed uh, the whole rental property thing. Um, you know, I recently sold mine, I guess it was, I don't know how many months ago, five or six months ago, maybe I don't remember now, but we've got one left. Uh, it's paid off. And, <clears throat> I kind of wish I'd have sold it. I went to the neighborhood yesterday. <laughs> it looks like people are kind of hurting. It looks like, uh, you know, not so much around here. We're pretty linear market, but um, it, it's starting to be noticeable that, and I get a lot of comments about it. And it, it, if you've got to buy, I understand. Well, we can save the solutions to, towards the end of the video, but just know it looks like, it, it is going to get worse and it's going to be a long, long time. It's going to be something we're going to see way through 23 and in 24, we're still yeah. going to be talking about real estate. I, I mean, look at this, look at this chart of what happened last time. Right. And, you know, last time the number of sales started to decline in 05, all the way through 06, 07, but the prices didn't crash. So we were all the way down here. Right. And they stayed down there. The prices stayed low for a couple of years. You know, they're showing an uptick in 09. But really, home prices didn't start to rise until the early teens. They stayed way down there through 2008, 2009, 10, 11. All right? Now, look at where we're at right now. 
2022. We're already at the second lowest ever, going all the way back to 2001. The only data point that was worse than this data point we got yesterday was May of 2020 when the whole world was locked inside terrified. Nobody was looking at houses because nobody was willing to let somebody into their house back then. So that data point is kind of bogus, if you ask me. So really, we are worse off right now than we have ever been as far as the number of contracts being sold. I want to emphasize that the home prices have not yet come down substantially. But what this chart is telling me is it won't take much for that to happen because when the number of sales, when the number of transactions is low, that market is known it's illiquid. And illiquid, mar illiquid markets are notoriously volatile. It won't take much to have a huge impact on prices. And we could get something that looks like a little bit after 2008, around 2008, 2009. It could make some of those sharp jags up before it comes back down. You know, we could have some type. I don't know what that was. It's really. Uh, My I, guess is that was things like the first time home buyer tax credits, some of the stimulus <laughs> money that came out. They lowered interest rates to near zero. So you had a couple of buyers came first in. First time home buyer tax yeah. credit. I got that actually. Yeah. Sure but it did, wasn't yeah. really it wasn't really enough to move prices up. Not no, maybe substantial. Yeah. yeah. What it did is it helped the market go through all that built up inventory of foreclosures. You remember the zombie homeowners and and all that just absolute deluge of inventory that hit the market. And this is a pretty good segue because you had a lot of job losses that happened. And I wanted yeah. to show you this oh, one. Yeah. This is this a good chart. One. U.S. continuing jobless claims. This is on Trading Economics, the economic calendar, and this is a one-year chart. And you can see continuing claims, people who have been out of work for a while. It was trending down right up until the Fed turned off the flow of money and started raising interest rates. Notice it's been trending up slowly, not really too fast. This is not a, a, an astronomical rise in unemployment here, but it has been trending up very slowly. And this is going to continue you know, look, Christmas is behind us now, folks. A lot of companies may have been holding off on those layoffs because it's bad optics to fire people right before Christmas. Mm -hmm. Well, in January, you don't have that. So we could be on the brink of a substantial move in unemployment. And I think that is the missing ingredient here in home prices coming down. Because when people lose their jobs, homes go up for sale, not because people want to sell, because people have to sell. That's yeah. what I think we're... We're waiting on here that's the number one reason people move is, is for a job when you lose your job more than likely you'll have to move or you know hopefully not hopefully we're not talking to anybody that's in this kind of bind um but if you are in this kind of bind um i'd like to talk about some solutions um that's the main thing i like to try to do in these conversations because it's easy to talk about all the bad you know, because it's obviously going to get bad. I mean, the the day of housing only goes up forever is over. It's obvious now. It's starting to come down. And aside from some type of crazy quantitative easing, like a 40-year mortgage, which I told you earlier, the longer I live, the more likely that seems. Now, they're going to pull out some weird, they're going to pull out stuff that we haven't seen before. You know, just like the, those other JAGs around 2008, 2009. Now, will they work? I don't know. A 40-year mortgage would, who knows what that would do to asset prices. I mean, uh, but he, here's the thing with, you know, let's look at interest rates for a minute, right? This is the, the interest rate on the U.S. 10-year treasury. It's been going straight up all year long. And, you know, the last month or so since mid-October, up here in the chart where I'm hovering, interest rates had been coming down. And there was not really any noticeable impact on the housing market. People didn't rush into the housing market and start buying homes because interest rates came down a little bit. They only came down like a half a point on your mortgage. They're still like six, six and a half percent. Well, they're starting to rise again. We're still in this uptrend in interest rates. The Fed is still tightening, even though the pivot talk has started. You know, other countries are dumping our debt. That is driving interest rates higher. So the situation in the housing market, from a buyer's perspective, it's not going to get better anytime soon. It's going to get more expensive to borrow. And if it gets more expensive to borrow, people get priced out of the housing market. So buyers are going to keep getting priced out for a while, even if prices start to come down. They need to come down a lot in and, order for and, those people to come back. And really, inflation is here to stay. That's the main, you know, if we wouldn't have this inflation problem, the interest rates wouldn't have had to go up, right? 
Yep. So That's if inflation's here to stay, then the interest rates are here to stay, if not go up. And, you know, when we do some more quantitative easing of any type, they're going to go up. Now, it's funny you should mention quantitative easing because I, I, I want to show this chart here. Let's get rid of some of my lines. This is the interest rate on the 10-year Treasury going all the way back to the 1970s, right? Here was Paul Volcker fighting inflation in the late 70s, early 80s. That's what they had to do to kill inflation back then. Now, every little economic crisis or big economic crisis we've had since 1981 has been followed by a big drop in interest rates. Happened in 1987, it happened in 94, it happened after the dot-com bubble, and it happened after the GFC. The answer was always to lower interest rates in order to spur economic growth. And that, you know, you mentioned before, the era of low interest rates and housing prices forever going up might be over. Because look, you've got this pretty clear trend of lower rates over time. Uh, not anymore, do we? Look, we have now broken out of that trend here and we're heading higher. And the Fed now has an inflation problem. Now, you could argue that the worst of inflation is behind us. Maybe not. Maybe it is. But the Fed now has to worry about inflation. They have not had to worry about inflation for almost 40 years. Now they do. So turning on the flow of easy money is not going to be as easy a decision as it was in 2008 or 2001 or 87 or 94 or any of those other economic crises. They're going to have to think twice because now you've got that inflation problem. So this is not going to be a one and done real quick crisis. And that's especially you millennials out there or maybe some of you old Gen Zers. You feel like the baby boomers have stolen your future. You feel like home ownership is a pipe dream and you'll never get there. Don't let that defeatist attitude creep into your thinking. All right. Because these prices will come down and they will come down substantially. It's a mathematical reality. You can't have millions of people forever priced out of the home ownership market. The market won't support that. So get your cash position up, you know, start saving, start living cheap. Yeah, it might mean rent a little bit longer. It might mean live beneath your means. It might mean that dream house is a few more years away, but the market is going to give you that opportunity to buy in. It just might take a little longer to get there. And, and try to remember <clears throat> back in 2008 or after 2008, uh, the investor for buying real estate, 20 cents on the dollar. Uh, really think about that. And that'll, that'll kind of give you some motivation to just hang on, hang on. Uh, I would recommend living in a travel trailer for a year or two. Uh, nothing wrong with that. You don't like where you live. You can pick up and move. Uh, it is the ultimate bug out plan, in my opinion. You know, if something happens in your area, you can hook up and leave. Um, like Jack said, rent beneath your means. If you absolutely have to have a house, uh, there's something called an assumable mortgage. Banks don't like to do it because they don't make any money off of it. But you can just pretty much walk into the person that's wanting to sell his mortgage. Uh, yeah, you can just kind of assume their mortgage. And that also assumes their interest rate. Wow. I but don't know how. That off, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right. They don't like to do it. But that's an option for some people. And as this thing gets a little worse, there's going to be all kinds of deals come up. Like uh, I would recommend go to the bank and talk to them. Say, Hey, I want this house. Uh, I can't, a lot of people aren't going to be able to buy houses that are not fixed up properly. You know, the FHA loan won't, won't, you know, they can't get it because the houses aren't to that standard, but sometimes you can uh, approach the bank and say, you know, I'm willing to do whatever it takes you know, to get this house and just pull on every thread and see what comes unraveled because that's the way I got every one of my rental properties in the beginning was just ch chasing it down to the very end. But if you can do whatever you can to just wait, because look at the charts. I mean, it, it, look at every, I've got a news story from today. We won't have time to get through it. It's off zero hedge. It's the same stuff. It's the same. And we're going to start seeing this more and more and more. So just, if you can wait, just wait. Some people can't. You're just going to have to do what you do. Like Jack says all the time, you don't get to pick what you have to sell at what price when you have to do it because you got to do it. And if you're there, um, you might think about selling sooner than later. Now, go back to 2005. Imagine if you had, say it's 2005, you're watching the 
Home prices are just going up day in and day out. Seems like you'll never be able to own a home. You got lousy credit. You got no cash, right? If you had started in 2005, when we're like here on the housing market, just starting to come down. Remember, the prices didn't crash for several years later, and then they stayed low for several years. Imagine in 2005, if you had started repairing your credit, let those, maybe those collection agency things or that medical bill that went to collection, let that stuff tick off your credit report. Now you're not a 580 anymore. Now you're back up in the 700. Start stockpiling your cash. Now you've got 20% to put down on a house. You've got time. You have got, that's, if there's one thing you take away from this video, you have got time. The, the market is heading lower. It's heading lower sharply, in my opinion. It's not going to turn around on a dime. So forget about your snapshot in time. Maybe you got bad credit. You got no cash position, but maybe your cash flow looks good. Maybe you still have a good paying job. Your income is more than your expenses. Start building up that, that down payment. Start repairing your credit. Start making better decisions. Don't sign up for high interest debt. And within a year or two, you're going to be in a much better position right as the market comes to you with a better price. That's what you need to start thinking about. That is, I think that's sound advice. That is good. Um, you know, good things come to those who wait. So just wait. If you can't, do your best. And don't be me in 2006. Don't sign up for a mortgage at 6.5% and buy at the top and then watch all of your hard-earned money get vaporized because of bad decisions that were made at Fannie and Freddie or Goldman or JPM or whoever. All right? don't, don't be me in 2006, everybody. That's what I'm trying to do. Learn from my mistakes so you don't repeat them. Maybe that's the takeaway. Don't be Jack. <laughs> <laughs> be Chris, don't be Jack. <laughs> well, I, I was fortunate to uh, just be paying attention. Uh, we didn't nail the top, and I didn't buy at the bottom. I would have probably kept my rental properties if I'd have bought them, you know, in 2009, 2010 when they were dirt cheap. But I didn't. Uh, they were, I got a, a good deal on them, don't get me wrong, but I didn't get that steal. And if I'd have had two renters not pay me, I would have been in the red. So when you start thinking that through, it's like, okay, uh, I can see housing. The, the, the best time to sell something's at the top. And you don't know where the top is, so you have to rely on what's expensive. It's way more, they're way more than what I bought them for, so they look expensive to me, so I sold them. It's, it's real. And the whole time, everybody's telling me I'm crazy. You know, you're, you're selling your rental properties? Why would you do that? Because nothing goes up forever. You know, they're, we're looking to get a better grip at, towards the bottom. We, I no doubt we won't call the bottom. But there is one caveat, and that's that 40-year mortgage or some type of crazy quantitative easing that would send housing prices to the moon. And I don't put it past these brain-dead idiots to do something like that. So if that does happen, we're going to have to jump in with both feet uh, quick, even though nothing's quick. The, the good news is nothing's fast. In, yep. in real estate. So we're going to have time to get in, even if they do that. So, you know, pay attention. We're going to be paying attention. We're going to be, uh, every time there's something to talk about real estate, I'm going to be on top of it because I want to have, uh, I, I really would like to do a flipping and renting and that kind of channel. I would really like to try to teach people how to get into rental properties when it's time, but I'm trying to stay quiet about it right now because it's just not time. Right. Well, I like to tell people to focus on what they can control. You can't control whether they do the 40 year mortgage or not, you can't control the Fed's decision making. You can't control what the market does. You can control your credit score. You can control your cash position, your own behaviors, your own living expenses. So focus on what you can control. Get your credit where it needs to be. Build up your cash position. I'm speaking to you, you millennial, you prospective home buyer right now. And the market right now is not in your favor, but I think the tide is shifting in your direction. So focus on what you can control and improve your own situation so that when the market provides you that opportunity, you can get in. And it'll be, it'll be your decision, not somebody else's when that time comes. Chris, yeah. I'm going to give you the final word, brother. Anything you want to add? Guys, hang in there. Wait, let the market come to you and have an awesome, awesome day. Thanks for having me on the show, Jack. Welcome back anytime, brother. Till next time, live small and dream big. Later.